Hey guys, how y'all doing? I hope everything is well. Everything is good with me. Y'all, I'm going to talk about the shooting that happened on the L train. Okay? That happened in Brownsville, East New York. It's like really big to the border. Now, the police was following this man that jumped the fare. Jumped the train style. So, when they were following him... This is what the police was saying. I'm just, I'm not saying this. I'm only saying what the police said would happen. They said he was mumbling in his voice, you know, you know, because they started following him. Stop following me. Stop following me. Now, we only going by what the police was saying. They said that would happen. So, he said, stop following me. If you don't stop following me, I'm going to kill you. So, now, the train comes. The L train comes. He jumps on the train. The police jumps on the train. So he jumps back off the train. And they jumps back off the train. So now they saying that dude had a knife. Okay. So when he had the knife. They said one, two, two of the police officers had tased him. And it wasn't working. I have a problem with this. Because, you know, I don't understand... Why Why come police is not trained to de-escalate certain problems? You understand? He just jumped the train style. You understand? He just jumped the train style. So why did this just go left? So now, since he had you, you keep showing a picture of a guy with a knife in the hand. Okay, we do see that, but we don't see the face. Okay, we don't see the face. They keep showing the guy... With a knife in their hand. A guy, girl, whoever. They keep showing that. And that's not helping us. Because we don't see who the person is. You understand what I'm saying? But I'm saying. So now. The police feel that. It's okay. To shoot. In a. In the side of a subway. Where people are standing sitting, they feel it's okay to shoot, which is crazy. That's not protocol. You cannot shoot in an open area like that. You have people, like I said, sitting on the train. You have people that's, that's waiting for the train. So now they don't shot up all these people, four people. And the other part, they tape the, you know, from the crime scene, they taped it off with the yellow tape. So now they're telling us that a stranger came over the yellow tape and took the weapon and bounced with it. Wait, hold on. They allowed a stranger to step over the yellow tape tape and take the weapon you basically fired shots at the guy that you said had the weapon he's on the ground he's done so but you allow another person to go over the yellow tape and take the weapon so you wasn't they wasn't afraid of that person taking the weapon and bounce, you know what I'm saying? He could have basically took took the weapon and came for them too. I don't know. This story just sounds weird to me. It sounds very, very weird. You know what I'm saying? It just sounds weird. And the picture, I'm not going for the picture. They keep showing this picture of a guy of a person with a knife. But we do not know who that person is because you're not showing their face. I don't know why they keep showing a hand with a knife in it. If the knife was your your evidence, why didn't you secure the evidence? How in the hell did you allow a stranger to cross over and pick the weapon up that they could have used on the officers? You just got finished powering him to death but you let a whole stranger come and take the weapon 
over the yellow tape? How? How? That's evidence there. Why didn't they pick the weapon up and secure it? You understand what I'm saying? You're supposed to secure the weapon. They did not do that. You literally left the weapon there, supposedly, allegedly, allegedly left the weapon there for anybody. Because evidently, y'all wasn't watching that a whole stranger went over the yellow tape and picked the weapon up. So now y'all showing us this guy that picked the weapon up. Now what about the other people that the police shot? They just was going pow, 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 pow. It is what it is. People getting in the head, powered in the head. Two got powered in the head. One is in critical. One, she got grazed. Another one got shot to play itself. Another one, then another place. What the hell is this? This really sounds really weird over a person that jumped the train style. It wasn't that serious. It wasn't that serious for this to go down this way. So what? He had a blade. It wasn't like he was like, if he had got in that train and boogied the heck heck off, that had been it. Damn that everybody has a weapon because of things that is happening in the street. You understand? But I just does, don't believe that everything that the police are saying. I'm sorry. I'm just not believing it. I just not believing it. And I don't understand, you know, well, we don't have a, we have a new commissioner, police commissioner. Why come he's not coming out? And speaking on this here, and Eric usually be um, in tow, like he was with Caban. He used to be in tow to address this. We need to see the body cam of what happened here. We need to see the body cam. Because this is unacceptable that police would literally shoot their weapon in a, in a, in a, Subway where people are standing or sitting. And my thing is this here. Why do you have to, for a train, a person that jumped the train style, why do you have to aim to, you know, to, to, to kill? Why didn't you shoot him to the leg so he could fall? You understand? Do y'all do any type of hand combat? I mean, I don't understand. Any hand combat. Do, do police officers do any hand combat? And then when this happens, the first thing they say is, we need to retrain them. Don't even try it. Reach. Y'all say that every time a police officer pals somebody, they need to be retrained. This is years going on. They ain't be trained yet. And then uh, the part is that the part that got me messed up is that they allowed. But this is allegedly what they said that this person came over the a yellow line. Where the hell was the police that they allowed a stranger to come over the yellow line to pick up the weapon? That y'all should have had secured. Remember, y'all was afraid of that weapon. Remember? That's why pow, 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 the train went down. That's why it went down. Because y'all was afraid of that. But y'all wasn't too damn afraid that y'all left it there right there on the ground. That a whole stranger walked over the tape, yellow tape and took it and bounced with it. I'm not understanding this. We need the commissioner to come out. We need Eric to come out. Because he usually toe to toe, remember? Any place that they go and bust everything, he got his um, he has on his um, bulletproof vest and everything, you know. Like, yeah, we need you to be with the new commissioner and find out what really happened. Look at the video. You need as as our mayor of New York City. 
we need you at least address something about us. About this situation, it's your city. Remember? The new commissioner needs to see the video and come out and let us know what's really good. Because I'm telling you right now, I don't feel good about this. I think something stinks in this milk. And they need to give an explanation what happened. What is going to happen to these police officers that piled the whole L train up? Didn't care if other people was on the train that you wounded them. And another thing, they call it friendly fire. You shot your own man. I don't I think they need to change that. I don't think it should be called friendly fire because my friends don't shoot me. My friends don't pop out me. So that shows you how wild that they were pow powing in the L. This is just so unacceptable. I had to come on here because this has been bothering me. I think it's very sad that we have to live like this here. You understand? We're already dealing with all of these here, um, all the electric people that we put in office is um, getting fired. Under investigation. We have to deal with that. But now, check this out. Now we got the new commissioner. Really, nobody can't even do nothing because everybody's under investigation. This is a hot-ass mess was going on in New York. I said it from the beginning. I said it. It was a bad idea. I knew I knew this was going to happen. I knew this was going to happen to New York. I told you, I feel like we feel like we're going back in the 80s. It really do. I said it from the beginning. We they don't have a leader because he just got fired. Resigned or whatever, fired. He, he resigned before he got fired. They want him out. So now, it's like killing the uh, hyenas. You know how you kill the wolf pack? You, you get the main one, and then the rest of them is running with the head cut, saw, with the head cut off. Nobody don't know what to do. I feel that Eric and the new commissioner need to come out and talk to us. I really do. I really think they need to come out, have some damn respect, do your job, all these hair, people being under investigation and all of that stuff there. I think they should just clean house. That's what they should do is clean house because guess what? This ain't right. This is not right. This is not right at all. This is not right. We should not be subjected to this type of corruption in New York City. This is just ridiculous. This is ridiculous that we cannot count on them because they're out here doing some old, some old grimy stuff out here. That we're supposed to sit back and look at. I think they need to clean house. But before they clean house, somebody need to come out. The new co the police commissioner need to come out and Adam need to come out here and talk for his city. And let us know what's good. Because I don't understand it. I'm confused. I don't understand what is going on. That you let a whole stranger take something that you was afraid of. That you had to pow, pow, pow up the L. And, and, and all these innocent people. I'm sorry that this happened to all these innocent people. I apologize because it don't seem like nobody else gonna apologize. I am, uh, I, I'm sorry that this this here had to happen to these innocent people over a a fair beater, only a fair beater. I don't want to hear nothing about what his other record was, what his back record was. We talk about a fair beater. We only go about a word of what this. These police officers said, we do not know that. Until you show us the video, or somebody at least come out and say something, what you think we're just going to sit back here and, 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 and nothing's going to be said? 
All right, y'all, watch the video because this is a mess. This is a hot, dirty, dirty, dirty mess, y'all. All right. On Sunday at 3 p.m. at the L train station on Sutter, and uh, our client was shot in the head by the NYPD. Make no mistake, the only bullets fired were those of the New York City Police Department, and this unnecessary tragedy could have been avoided had they employed proper de-escalation measures. We are here today because the city of New York has failed to take responsibility for the actions of its officers. We are here to ask for a full investigation. We are here to ask that the NYPD and the interim commissioner release the body camera footage of those officers and allows the public the opportunity to see exactly what happened. And we don't want to take their word for it because as it stands today, we do not have a fair and a true story and a full story of the events that happened. We only have their word. And the inconsistencies that we see at this time are unacceptable. And the public is outraged, as you can tell by the protests and by what has happened here in Brownsville. This is a community issue. This is an issue of policing and how policies are employed and the practices and policies of the department and how the interactions of these officers with the public in certain areas of New York are disproportionately aggressive to the actions by the public. So we are asking for this full investigation and we expect that the commissioner allow the public to see the body camera footage immediately. And we, our prayers are with Gregory and all of those affected and injured in this incident. And we hope that everyone has a speedy recovery. We know the road ahead is very long, um, but we ask for all of your prayers at this time. Uh, at this time, I'm gonna introduce Mr. Keith Wright, Keith White, I'm sorry, uh, a co-counsel uh, who's gonna speak on the matter as well. Good morning. Again, my name is Keith White. I'm also attorney for Gregory Del Pesh. Let's be clear. People are not jumping turnstiles because they are broke. People are jumping turnstiles because the city's policies are broken. And so what we're seeing and what we're witnessing is not something that rests at the feet of somebody who's trying to get on the train. This rests at the feet of a mayor who's not accepting responsibility. This rests at the feet of a chief of police who's not accepting responsibility. You can't say that this was a mishap. You can't say that this was simply a mistake. Someone was shot in the head that was in another car that was not present. And this person is a hardworking man who worked 20 years, wakes up every morning, goes to work, minds his business. He did not deserve this. We deserve better. Our city deserves better. Gregory Del Pesh deserves better. I want to introduce you to Mr. Del Pesh's cousin, Gregory. Um, how you doing? So, um, Gregory Del Pesh is my cousin. Um, he keeps to himself, quiet, and he was hard working. Um, he's been with the um, Woodhall Hospital for 20 years. So, he was on his way to work, and there's no reason why he should not make it to work. Right? I, be, I believe that the, the NYPD was reckless in, in dispersing their guns in front of um, in front of um, citizens and I just you know I, I think there should be an investigation and I just want to just I just want to thank the, the, the councilman and I want to thank the, um, the, the political um, analysts and the clergy for all that they do. And I wanna also thank the protesters um, that was there last night. We have to get justice for Gregory Delpesh. That's it, thank you. At this time, we wanna introduce our council member, uh, Chris Banks. First of all, let's continue to keep uh, the families in prayer uh, as we continue uh, to wait uh, for good news uh, that Gregory will come out of this. Uh, let's paint the picture of a reckless NYPD, a reckless 
two officers who were callous, who were cavalierish, who opened fire in a public area on the L train. Didn't think about folks going to work. Didn't think about folks just living their normal lives. This was dangerous, irresponsible, and careless. So yes, it's been said that the administration said that this was the restraint, the best restraint shown that these officers should be honored or recognized. It wasn't restraint. It was careless. It was dangerous. It put in jeopardy so many people's lives. And as a result, we have a young man at the age of 49 who was shot in the head. We have another vic a person who was shot. We have an officer who was shot. So if you can't say that this was dangerous, that this was reckless, it was complete disregard for everybody, hmm. I don't know what to say. So this is not about restraint. So folks who want to make that characterization that this is about restraint, that this was the best restraint, this to me was criminal. We are demanding that that officer be suspended and that there be justice for this, the families that are involved in this. We can't have this cowboy mentality when it comes to policing or protecting our communities. This is exactly what it was. It was a handbook. It was a paid, sorry, out of the wild, wild west. And this is the result that we have. At this time, I'd like to introduce Assemblywoman Latrice Walker. Thank you, Nick. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, family. Uh, my name is Latrice Walker. I represent the 55th Assembly District, which includes the community of Brownsville, where this incident took place. My prayers go out, of course, to the innocent woman as well, who was grazed by a bullet. Indeed, the 37-year-old man who was shot after the police confronted him for not paying $2.90 in a fare, and the other police officer who that day went to work expecting to return home to his family. Think about that. $2.90, fare evasion. We've had a number of conversations in the New York State Legislature with the MTA with respect to fare evasion. But of course, they determined to open, as my colleague said, the wild, wild west on fare evaders. But we know that this is really a conversation with respect to poverty. A number of inconsistencies took place and failures of the systems that the people of the state of New York depend on. It is my understanding that the police say the man who didn't pay his fare threatened uniformed officers with a knife. While the NYPD has what's called use of force continuum, it spells out the steps that an officer is trained to take before resorting to potentially utilization of lethal force. The police say that the officers tried to use a taser while they either malfunction or weren't effective. Quite frankly, there was a story that was published that says that tasers malfunction 40% of the time. Is this true? If so, then the officers need another option so they are not so quick to utilize excessive force. We need an independent investigation of this shooting. It can't be the case this time that when the police are investigating the police, they come back with an inconsistent result. We demand transparency and accountability. Why were the officers firing their weapons in such a closed environment? Quite frankly, because they were not transit police officers. They were not trained in order to address a circumstance on a crowded train. Why were they there in the first place? An independent investigation must also examine the training that are given to police officers. 
What happens when someone does not pay their fare? What happens when you encounter someone who is an emotionally disturbed person? This is not a new occurrence to the Brownsville community. We have seen police officers exercise depraved indifference to life on a number of occasions, many of them resulting in the same type of traumatic brain injury that we have seen here in this particular instance. We are noticing that this is a pattern and practice with the police department, particularly with respect to their new rules and regulations with respect to um, the way they are surveying our communities. I also want to add, in addition to the release of the video, that an investigation be opened up by our New York State Attorney General's office as it relates to the pattern and practice that this police department has undertaken, which has resulted in the level of injury and or death that we have seen on too many occasions. I thank you so much for this opportunity. I am Assemblymember Latrice Walker. At this time, we want to bring uh, Jasmine Gripper from the Working Families Party. Thank you. Working families in New York deserve integrity, they deserve respect, and they deserve safety. The NYPD is not licensed and authorized to be judge and jury on our streets. We deserve to be have the full dignity and respect every day when we ride the subway. Mayor Adams, you are the mayor of the entire city. Call the family, pick up the phone, and make sure that they are okay. Check on them as well as checking on the NYPD. New Yorkers deserve better, and we will have better in this city. And I support the family in, in, in calling for full transparency, releasing of the video, so we can see exactly what happened for ourselves. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to introduce L. Joy Williams, president of the Brooklyn chapter of the NAACP. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And good morning. I can't believe that we are here yet again for another story of another instance of police officers who are responsible for public safety putting the public in danger. I live not too far from here, and the train stop where in which this happened, my children stop at that stop on a regular basis. So imagine the panic. Imagine parents, imagine loved ones getting the notification or seeing news about this and immediately thinking, what time is it? Is my child on the train right now? Are they safe? Is my husband safe? Is my cousin safe? The NYPD is responsible for public safety. And to draw a weapon on someone because of a $2.90 fare, tell me in your right mind how you think that is protecting the public by drawing a weapon in such an enclosed space to apprehend someone for a $2.90 fare. Is that public safety? The assemblywoman and the council member have already stated as well as my other colleagues here on the need for justice. And justice not only for those who were physically harmed, emotionally harmed, but also for the public. And that requires an investigation into what happened, acknowledging the failures, and committing and doing the action of making sure it never happens again. And as the assembly member mentioned, we have seen recently the number of these incidents increasing when we had previously reached a point where it was starting to decline. We will not go back. And this community will not go back to an instance to be fearful, not only from what can happen to you in the street, but also from someone who wears a uniform. 
so our community is standing united that the city take responsibility that the NYPD take responsibility for what happened here but that also we put into place practices policy and legislation that addresses some of the root causes as to the reason why someone would need to jump a turnstile to begin with and making sure that we break this pattern and practice of being reckless with the lives of black people in New York City. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time. If you have any questions for Nick, the family, or any of the elected officials, please raise them now. So well, we won't talk about his health condition right now. We will say that he is continuing to, to improve and we expect and we affirm a full recovery. Yes. Uh, right now, what we can say is that he's fighting for, you know, he's fighting for his his quality of life. Uh, he's in critical condition at this time, um, uh, and, and we're praying that he he makes a speedy recovery. Yes. Sir. Uh, we're investigating um, the potential for a lawsuit. It seems that the conduct certainly has risen to that level. Uh, where uh, accountability needs to be met here and uh, it may result in that. But at this point, what we are seeking is the release of the body camera footage so we can properly investigate and make that determination. Okay, thank you. Thank you.